Hello there, guys. Welcome back to a short online tutorial. Today, we're based in Adobe Photoshop, and it's your good friend Jack from Blue Sky Graphics back again to show you some cool stuff. What I would like to do today, guys, is show you how to create this ghost text effect within Adobe Photoshop. A very easy process for you to follow, but as you can see, a really cool effect that you can apply to typography, which then you can use in magazine designs, poster designs, a uh, wide range of uh, graphic design elements and genres that you could apply this effect to. Question should be, is how do we do it? And that's, how, that's why we're here today, to learn. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take these two top layers here with my move tool selected. I'm just gonna press uh, shift click on the top one there and press backspace to um, start from afresh. As you can see, I have a layer here filled with black. If I've moved that down there, I have the original text already here for me. Now I'm just gonna get this aligned correctly to the page. So I'm just gonna use my alignment tools up here and we're gonna align it horizontally center and vertically center like so. The first thing that we need to do is to convert this typography layer into a smart object. So very simply on that layer, if you right click on it, you have the option here to convert it to a smart object. Now I need to just quickly uh, manually add some distortion to this. So if I press Command T on Mac or Control T on Windows to get our transform options open, and then I'm gonna right click and use the option here of distort. It's gonna come through here and just quickly drag that to the right there. and Let's drag that to the left, like so. Wonderful. So now with that distorted, uh, well the distortion applied to this type now, uh, I'm now gonna apply a filter. So with that layer still highlighted, I'm now gonna to come to Filter, Blur Gallery, and we're gonna use Path Blur. Now with this particular blur, what we can do is really sort of manipulate and um, distort our own paths here like so. So if I double click there, what we can do is bring this down here, like so, really start to distort it. It may take a couple seconds for it to update, guys, um, seeing as it's quite a powerful thing that we're asking uh, Photoshop to do here. Just using that, set, that center circle in there, just to bend that a little bit there, like so. Wonderful, may even take this one here as well. Like that. So you put you about there, let's say, bend that as well there. Wonderful, may even put one here, let's say. Double click to finish the line off. And we're just gonna bend that like so. And what I need to do is come through and manipulate the speed and the taper. So I'm gonna bring the speed up here, like so. And you'll see the speed of the blur, as you can see there, really coming, uh, really being really effective there. And just to make the text a little bit sharper, what we're gonna also do is um, increase the taper a little bit here. So just wait for this to update. Like I said, sometimes guys, you need to uh, sort of go through and persevere with the updating options just so that we can uh, improve our designs. Okay, so now I'm happy with my original blur, my uh, blur here, right? So we're just gonna press okay, like so, all right? And yet again, you may be updating here. So let the um, job and let Photoshop complete the task that we're asking it because as you saw at the start of the video, we have a really cool effect. So sometimes guys, as the term applies, Rome isn't built in a day. This is a perfect example of that. Let Photoshop do the work and the results will be very impressive. Any second now. Wonderful. Okay, so now what I wanna do is duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna press the shortcut Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows like so. And the benefit of making this into a smart object is because we now apply a smart filter. The benefit of a smart filter is that we can now um, edit that particular blur. So if I double click the blur gallery there, what I'm gonna do, we need to make that top layer just a little bit more sharper. So I'm just gonna bring the taper up to 100%. Here, yeah, just wait for it to update. There we go. And maybe bring the speed down just a tad, probably around 160, like so. And yet again, let's press okay. And yet again, just wait for it to update and apply the blur. The reason we had to apply that second uh, layer guys is to sort of bring the word through. Obviously we know, I know we're applying um, 
the sort of ghost distorted effect of this typography, but we need to read the word in order to be able to sort of not understand what it says. But there you go. Wonderful. Now, I want to apply some effects with some layer styles. So if I come to our second layer here, uh, I'm just going to simply double click on the layer. And as you can see, we can now start applying some um, layer styles to that particular layer. Make sure you have the most blurred layer highlighted also. So what I'm going to do now is come through and apply a gradient overlay. As you can see, I'm using these blue effects here, these blue preset gradients. You can build your own gradients, but I think this one is working quite well. Keep the, keep the opacity 100%. And what we're going to do also as well is apply a satin as well and probably keep the opacity around 50%. Uh, keep the size to about 30, let's say, and um, we'll keep the distance at about 120. Let me press OK. And there you have it, guys. That's how you create that ghost text effect within Adobe Photoshop. If you're interested in finding out more about the school, the courses that we offer, please take a look at our website at blueskygraphics.co.uk. There also, there also there are recordings that are coming out on a weekly basis, so please make sure you take a look. Thank you very much, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.